Hello everybody, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And within the electrophoresis, we were discussing about the basic principle of electrophoresis followed by we have also discussed about the uh, vertical gel electrophoresis and how to perform the vertical gel electrophoresis. So, in today's lecture, we are going to start discussing about the horizontal gel electrophoresis. So, in the horizontal gel electrophoresis, the electrophoresis in this gel system is performed in a continuous fashion with the both electrodes and the gel cassettes are submerged within the buffer. What is mean by the continuous uh, uh, electrophoresis is that the, uh, the current is not flowing through the gel which means it is actually continuous. For example, when you are running the vertical gel electrophoresis or if you recall you have the two chambers one is the top chamber where you are keeping the buffer okay and which is the negative uh, electrode and then you have the lower chamber where you have the again the buffers okay and then you have the positively charged electrodes okay and in between these two chambers you have the gel actually which has been sandwiched within the glass plates. So, here you have the uh, polyacrylamide gel and because and, and so the current cannot directly go from the negative to positive uh, electrode whereas current has to go through with this gel and then the, the gel is actually connecting the two electrode chambers. Compared to that in the horizontal gel you have a chamber where you have the negative electrodes and then you have the positive electrode and then a gel slab is being submerged within the buffer. So, the buffer is on the top of the gel, buffer is on the bottom of the gel and that is why the current can freely move throughout this system. So, the current can flow throughout these buffer solutions and the buffer solution is also continuous. Whereas, in this case the buff two buffer chambers are connected through the uh, gel. So, the electrophoresis chamber has two platinum electrodes placed on both the ends and are connected to the external power supply from a power pack which supplies a direct current or the DC voltage. So, you have a electrophoresis chamber where you have a negative electrode and the positive electrode on both the side and then these electrodes are connected through the power cord to the uh, power pack and this power pack can supply the DC voltage of the any amount. The tank is filled with the running buffer and the gel casted is submerged inside the buffer. There are additional accessories needed for costing the agarose gel such as the comb, comb is required to prepare the different wells, then you require the spacer, then you require the gel caster. So, how to run the agarose gel electrophoresis? So, before uh, discussing about how to run the gel uh, agarose gel electrophoresis, let us understand the, the, uh, the, uh, the reagent as well as the instruments what you are required. So, for the buffer, the purpose of the each reagent used in the horizontal gel electrophoresis is also are as follows. So, you require uh, agarose. So, agarose is a polymeric sugar which is used to prepare the horizontal gel for the DNA analysis. Then you require the ethidium bromide. So, ethidium bromide is a dye it is actually going to use to stain the uh, DNA. So, see the so, ethidium bromide is required for the staining of the agarose gel to visualize the DNA. Then you require the sucrose, sucrose is required for the preparation of loading dye for the horizontal gel. If you remember, we were using the glycerol uh, in the case of the SDS page. Uh, so, you have a choice either you use the glycerol or to the sucrose. The purpose is that you want to provide a high density solution so that the whatever you load into the gel will remain within the gel. And then you require the tris SCL. The tris SCL is a component of the running buffer and then you require the bromophenol blue. Bromophenol blue is a tracking dye to monitor the progress of the electrophoresis. 
Now once you prepare the buffer and the reagents, then you can actually perform the horizontal gel agarose electrophoresis. Uh, to performing the agarose gel electrophoresis, the first you have to cast the gels compared to the acrylamide gel where you are actually going to add the, uh, uh, the cross linkers and then you are going to add the timid and APS to induce the, uh, the polymerization reactions. Here you are actually not going to do that. For casting of the gel, what you are going to do is you are just take, going to take the agarose. So agarose is a sugar. So when you boil this and is a, is a polymer actually, so when you boil this sugar, it actually going to form a jelly like solutions, just like as you might have seen when you cook the rice in your home and if you boil the rice, it actually gives some amount of starch. So it is agarose is also a similar kind of uh, carbohydrate. So where you if you bo boil the uh, gel, it actually forms a jelly like solutions and then if you pour that jelly like solution into a tray which actually contains the comb, once the jelly like solution get cooled down, then you are going to have a gel slab. So for the casting of the gel, different steps are this different steps to cause the agarose gel for horizontal gel electrophoresis are given in the figure. The agarose powder is dissolved in a buffer, either the TRIST EDTA buffer or tree B buffer and then you heat it to melt the agarose. Hot agarose is poured into the gel cassettes and allowed it to set. A comb base can be inserted into the hot agarose to cast the gel well for loading the samples. In few cases, we can add the ethidium bromide within the gel so that it stains the DNA while the electrophoresis is going on. So what you are going to do is you are going to take the required amount of the agarose into a beaker and then you boil this, I, you can use the burner or you can use the microwave and then once it get dissolved, then at this step itself, you can actually have a flexibility of adding the ETBR and then you pour it into the gel cassette and uh, before it gets solidified, you can also put the comb so that it is actually going to give you the wells. And uh, once the wells are prepared, then you can load the samples onto that particular wells and you can be able to dissolve the gel DNA to visualize. Now the gel cassette is placed uh, in the electrophoresis tank some, submerged completely and the DNA are loaded into the well with the help of a pipette man and run with a constant voltage. So once the gel is prepared, then you can just take out the gel, the gel from the gel cassette, put it into the, your running buffer, uh, putting it into the electro, electrophoresis chamber and then you connect, then you load your DNA and then you connect it to the DC power. With the help of the power bank, you can supply the constant voltage and then you can resolve the DNA into the agarose. And the DNA runs from the negative to the positive end and the ethidium bromide actually runs present in the gel stain the DNA. Observing the agarose gel in the UV chamber shows that the DNA stained with the ETBR as the orange colored fluorescence. So what happened in this case is that when you have a negatively charged uh, electrodes and then you have a positively charged electrodes and then you have a place where you can actually load the DNA. So what will happen is the DNA because DNA is negatively charged it actually runs in this direction because it runs towards the positively size whereas the ETBR is a positively charged dye. So it ETBR is actually runs in this direction. So while they are running in the opposite directions, the ETBR stains the DNA and ETBR stains the DNA within the major and minor group which means the ETBR actually intercalate within the DNA. So you have, you know that the DNA has two strand uh, and if these two strands are actually having the bases on the side. So in within the bases, the ETBR is getting intercalated and as a result, it actually gives the orange fluorescence when you visualize them under the UV. And what you see is when you keep the DNA, when, when you keep the uh, the agarose gel into the UV chamber that you are going to see the orange color bright DNA uh, glowing within the, ag within the agarose. There is no de-staining step required because the ETBR only gives the fluorescence when it interacts with the, when it, when it interacts with the DNA and intercalate within the basis. 
that is why there is no de staining step is required because the ETBR uh, which is not interacting with the DNA does not give the orange fluorescence. And uh, what you can see is for example, in this particular representative image, what I am what we are showing is that the these are the plasmid DNA which has been in, resolved onto the agarose gel and they are showing you the intense stain and what you see is the this blurry uh, signal from the gel is actually the RNA. So, RNA is uh, never been get resolved and never give you the compact band because of that the RNA is going to give you the uh, hazy appearances. So, with this uh, we have given you the, uh, the uh, complete theoretical information how to, uh, how to perform the agarose gel electrophoresis and how to run the gel electrophoresis. But uh, the uh, theoretical information is not enough so that is why I would like to take you to my laboratory where we have prepared a small demo clips where we have shown how to boil the samples, what are the precautions you should take when you are uh, boiling the agarose uh, uh, solutions and then how to pour it and how to prepare the gel, how to prepare the wells, how to load the sam uh, DNA, what are the precautions you should take while you are uh, loading the DNA into the chamber into the wells and ultimately how to visualize these, uh, these uh, gel into the UV chambers, what are the precautions you should take when you visualize the, uh, the DNA into the UV chambers because as you know that the ETBR, UV and all these are dangerous for, uh, it's, it's dangerous for the human being. ETBR is a, is a carcinogenic molecule so it actually causes the cancer so that is why you have to always wear the gloves when you are performing the agarose gel electrophoresis. So, in this demo the students have shown you the uh, how to perform the gel electrophoresis, horizontal gel electrophoresis, the agarose gel electrophoresis. Today we are going to give you the demo of the agarose gel electrophoresis which is being used to resolve the DNA. So, in a typical agarose gel electrophoresis apparatus what you need is you have a horizontal, you have the uh, buffer chamber where you can have the two electrodes, you can have the cathode, uh, you can have the anode which is the black color electrode and then you can have the cathode. So, this cathode and anode will go and house into the, uh, the uh, buffer chamber. Uh, connecting these cords to the power cord, you have the two different cords, one is red cord and the black cord. And apart from this, you also need a gel caster where you can be able to cast the gels. So, this is the uh, small gel tray which you can use to cast the agarose, agarose gels. And apart from that, you also have the comb which actually can be used to prepare the well. And uh, besides this, the reagent what you need to perform the agarose electrophoresis, you need the uh, agarose powder which you can buy from the Sigma or any other company of a very high quality. Then you require the ETBR which is a staining dye and uh, you, you, as you can see that the ETBR is being kept in a in a vial which is covered with the foil because the ETBR is light sensitive and so it should be protected from the light. And apart from that you also require the running buffer which is the 50x TA. And uh, so let us start the uh, casting of the agarose gel and uh, performing the gel electrophoresis. Uh, before you start the uh, preparation of the agarose gel, what you have to do is you have to set the uh, tray so that you can be able to pour the agarose into that particular gel, uh, particular tray and then you will be able to cast. So, what you have to do is you have to take this tray, you have to very carefully clean the trays and with the water as well as uh, so that it will be free of any kind of contaminations and any kind of because you know that the DNA is very sensitive for the DNAs and the other kind of enzymes then what you have to do is you have to keep this tray in this way uh, into this uh, gel caster and then with the help of these screws you have to screw the uh, the gel uh, gel tray and you have to uh, uh, tight it uh, and you as you can see that I am tightening it the those both screws uh, simultaneously so that uh, it will be cut completely sealed. And then now once the, this tray got sealed and you are ready to pour the agarose, what you have to do is you have to first pour, put the comb and when you put the comb, what you have to do is you have to ensure 
that there is a enough gap between the comb as well as the, the, the lower end of the comb as well as the tray so that that space the agarose is going to fill and that's how it is actually going to help you to prepare the well. So uh, for a typical gel, uh, agarose jelly lactoporosis what you have to do is you have to first prepare the, uh, the uh, 1x TA buffer and uh, for a typical this kind of small uh, chamber you require somewhere around 300 to 400 ml buffer and uh, and for the gel also you require at least 30 to 40 ml so what uh, so for a safer side what we can do is we can just prepare the 50 ml agarose gel and uh, uh, for a for a dna of uh, so around 1 kb to uh, around 1 kb uh, you can actually run a gel of 0.8 percent if because as the dna size will lower down you have to keep increasing the size of the agarose uh, percentage so for example if you are uh, st uh, start, uh, interested to uh, explore the uh, you know apoptosis or dna segmentations in those cases the the gel band or the dna band what you are expecting is from 200 base pair to uh, higher molecular weight so in those cases we normally run the agarose of 2% but in most of the cases what we do is we run around 0.8% around agarose gel and that is good enough to resolve most of the uh, DNA sizes. So for preparing a 50 ml 0.8% agarose what you need is you have to just weigh the 0.4 grams of agarose and then you have to boil it into the microwave and then you can prepare. So let's uh, understand how to do that. Uh, now what we have done, we have weighed the uh, required amount of agarose and then we have prepared the 1x uh, TA buffer and some of the buffer we have poured into the chamber itself and the for preparing the agarose gel what we have done is we have taken up almost 70 ml of the buffer because when you boil there will be always a loss of some buffer so what we have, what we have calculated, we have calculated for the 50 ml and now we are keeping 10 to 15 ml of more water because when you boil this you are going to evaporate the water is going to evaporate and that's how you are going to lose some water so once you are uh, you're going to pour the agarose into the buffer and then you are going to do the boiling so what you can do is you can use a microwave and you just turn on uh, the microwave and what you have to ensure that the microwave is uh, actually boiling the agarose and melting it so in this process what will happen is that the uh, the water will going to warm up and the agarose is going to melt and once the agarose is going to melt it is actually going to swell and it is going to take up the water and in that process it is actually going to make a viscous material or the viscous jelly like material and that is what is agarose gel so but before because it is actually going to boil uh, it is actually can also come out from the uh, from the beaker so you have to keep stopping and keep checking that that is something what is not happening and uh, in between you have to always mix because the agarose is uh, made up of, of sugar so it also can get charred if it get localized heating and once your agarose is going to heat up then you can be able to use that and you have to ensure that you boil it very thoroughly so that all the granules what is present in the uh, you know the agarose should be get melted so let's check uh, whether the agarose got melted or not so for checking what we do is we have a different kinds of uh, the gloves which the, the gloves like we made up of a rubber and these are the gloves what you can use for touching the hot uh, 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 solutions because the our normal gloves what I am wearing right now is not good enough so uh, we have to heat up little more because uh, still that I could see some of the uh, gross granules uh, so uh, once this step is over then you have to uh, just take out the agaros uh, what you see now is the water is boiling right now okay and the uh, vapors are coming out so this is actually uh, a rough estimate that you are going to lose somewhere around 10 to 15 ml of uh, buff, uh, water uh, in the process of boiling. Now what you have to do is you have to just uh, let it get cooled uh, for some time and then you have to add the dye. So in this case we are adding the ETBR. So once it is get cooled down then you can just add the 
uh, 3 microliter of ETBR dye and you remember ETBR is a carcinogenic dye so you have to be very careful you always have to wear the gloves and you have to discard these tips very uh, thoroughly or very uh, because you don't want to contaminate the uh, environment so this tip as well as all these buffer has to be discarded in a uh, in a way so that it should not get out so uh, you add the um, ETBR and then you keep this tip in a secured place so that you will be able to throw this in a in a in a trash bag which is meant for collecting the uh, carcinogenic material now your solution is ready and i can pour this into the your uh, tray so you can just pour this into the tray and uh, we have to wait for some time so that it should get solidified and then we can load the dna and we can run the agarose uh, now you can see that the agarose uh, gel is being uh, solidified and you can see that it is clear so there is no granules or the granulate or the precipitated material present and now what we have to do is we have to remove this comb and we have to keep it into the uh, the, uh, the chamber and then we uh, it is going to be ready to use. So before you do that you have to add some amount of buffer into the this uh, tray so what you have to do is you have to add some amount of buffer okay and then you have to very carefully without making any movement in the longitudinal direction you have to vertically uplift the comb into the top chamber like this okay and that actually is going to prepare the uh, wells so what you can see now is the wells in this particular agarose block okay and once you, you are sure that there is no leakage and there all these wells are good enough then what you can do is you can unscrew this uh, tray or the cassette and we are going to remove the comb so what we are going to do is we are going to remove this into the chamber and then we are going to remove the comb so very carefully you remove the comb okay and then you are going to fill the chamber with the buffer so when you fill it, the whole uh, buffer or the gel is going to be submerged and that's why this particular type of uh, gel electrophoresis is called as the continuous gel electrophoresis. Now what you can see here that we can see the, uh, the wells in the gel. Uh, so if you see the gel, you can see the well actually and uh, now we are going to load the sample into those wells and then we are going to connect the chamber to the uh, to the to the electrophoresis power supply and then we it is going to perform the electrophoresis so to prepare the dna sample what we have done is we have uh, actually 10x uh, loading dye so accordingly you just take the dna you add the small amount of the buffer and then you add the uh, the loading buffer in such a way so that it's going to be 1x and then what you are going to load the sample so in this case we are loading the uh, 20 microliter of the sample so you are going to take the sample into the uh, pipette okay make sure that there is no air bubble and then you are going to uh, visualize the gel and what you can see actually or sometimes if there is a problem in looking at the wells or there is a problem of visibility of the wells because sometimes the, the lower chamber or the lower background is also going to be transparent in that case you can just put a black paper at the at the place where you have the wells and that actually is going to allow you to see the well properly so let's see how to load this so you hold your tip pipette okay and then you bring your tip next to the well okay and then you load the sample and what you will see is that the dna is getting filled into the well so now see here uh, how I am loading the sample okay so I have lo I have taken the 20 microliter and first I will do is I will take my tip into the well and then I will load what you will see is when I am loading I will very carefully slowly I am keeping my tip out okay so that the whole well is going to fill with the tip but what you have to remember is that while your tip is 
or while your tip is inside the well, you should not leave your plunger so that it should not create any air bubble because if that happens, the, the DNA will come out. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll connect this to the cord. So the black will go with the black, the red will go with the red. So before doing so, we have to put the lid so that there will be no uh, evaporation of the buffer. So you just connect the black to black and red to red. Uh, and now we have to turn on the power pack. So in a power pack you have a switch here which actually allows the turning on. Connected the uh, chamber or the electrophoresis chamber with the uh, power supply unit. We have set it at 80 volt and now it is running. And what you will see is uh, once the DNA, the DNA tracking die will reach to the end of the gel, then we are actually going to remove the uh, gel from the apparatus. And then we, since we have already added the ETBR into the gel, the ETBR is going to run from the negative side to positive side, whereas the DNA is going to run from the uh, towards the positive side because DNA is negatively charged and the uh, ETBR is uh, positively charged so they will run in a opposite direction so while they are running the ETBR is going to intercalate within the basis of the DNA and that's how it is actually going to stain the gel, uh, DNA into the present in the gel so then after that what you have to do is you have to take out this tray and put it into the gel dock machine and that actually is going to visualize Then close the thing. application nucleic acids with the DM bromide exposure optimal exposure or we can select manual also then we will acquire the images Now we can find here this is the DNA ladder, this is the PCR amplified product. So in the demo I have explained each and every aspect related to the agarose gel electrophoresis, how to perform the gel electrophoresis and with this I would like to conclude our lecture here and in a subsequent lecture we are also going to discuss different variants of the electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis and how you can be able to utilize them for, uh, uh, give, for exploring the answers or uh, for solving the experimental questions. Thank you.